But in first place, with a 97-metre wingspan, it's the Hughes H4 Hercules, better known as the Spruce Goose. The Spruce Goose is nearly 70 years old, and yet it still holds the record for the largest wingspan. November the 2nd, 1947. The largest aircraft ever built takes to the water off Long Beach, California. At the controls of the 24,000 horsepower flying boat, the Hollywood film director and record-breaking aviator, Howard Hughes. This is his attempt at creating the world's first transatlantic military transporter. Over three times the size of anything that has flown before, Few believe it can fly, but it does. Just once, and for less than a minute. But Hughes has proved his doubters wrong, and the Spruce Goose stakes its claim in aviation history. Today, the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in Oregon is its final resting place. Chip Yates is a record-breaking aviator and pioneering designer of electric aircraft. He's come to study the Spruce Goose. It contains so many innovations that he plans to use it for inspiration for his own transatlantic record attempt. It's massive. <laughs> you can read about this all you want, but nothing really prepares you for the moment you see it. To undertake a project like this, you'd have to be probably part crazy and part genius. And I think that fairly sums up Howard Hughes. But even for Howard Hughes, building an aircraft of this magnitude was no easy task. A challenge made even harder by the military's demand for it to be built from the cheapest and most plentiful material available, wood. So it'd be like someone coming to you today and saying, we want you to build a 747, but make it all out of wood. The wood Howard Hughes opted to use for his record-breaking flying machine wasn't spruce, as its nickname suggests, but birch. And in doing so, he pioneered a process that continues to be used in aircraft manufacture today. To accomplish such an undertaking, they actually invented a, a composite process called Duramold. Tiny strips of birch wood were used, and they used thin strips so they would be flexible enough to take a shape like this for this efficient hull. They would layer them crosswise like fiberglass is done today. And then using glue and eight tons of nails, this whole craft was built and allowed to dry. Once it was done, they pulled all the nails out to reduce weight, and they were left with an incredibly strong structure. It could be considered the grandfather of modern composites. It's incredibly strong layers that give you strength and light weight together. It's the holy grail of aviation design. But the Spruce Goose's construction was just one of the many innovations that Howard Hughes pioneered. To enable a single pilot to control the aircraft's vast flying surfaces, an altogether new approach was needed. The forces on a plane this huge uh, rule out using normal cables. So for a plane this big, it would take 200 men to actually fly it if it was using old technology. Howard Hughes's solution was an ingenious system of hydraulics, connecting the pilot's controls in the cockpit to the aircraft's vast flying surfaces, replacing cables with tubes filled with pressurized hydraulic fluid. It was a breakthrough in aviation technology, enabling the pilot to exert massive amounts of force with just the slightest touch of the controls. And it paved the way for all larger passenger aircraft right up to the computer age. The Spruce Goose was finally completed four years later than planned. In November 1947, the world's media was watching as Howard Hughes took to the controls for a series of fast taxi runs. So this is it. This is where Howard Hughes would have sat, that moment of truth, when he actually had to make the decision with all these people watching, should I actually fly this plane? And he presses those throttles forward, eight throttles, 24,000 horsepower. He passes through 80 miles an hour, and just like that, he's flying. The Spruce Goose flew for just over a kilometer and a half, 21 meters above Long Beach Harbor. But as her vast hull settled back onto the water, it would mark the end of an all too brief flying career.
production costs had spiralled and her pioneering technology was already out of date. But while Howard Hughes only flew the Spruce Goose once, it was enough to prove to the world that an aircraft of this magnitude could fly. And for Chip Yates, his first visit to the Spruce Goose has demonstrated that when it comes to aircraft design, nothing is impossible. And back in the 1940s, people could not understand how a plane this big could fly. And Hughes proved that, and he opened the door to heavy payload, long endurance, jumbo jets, and cargo aircraft that we enjoy traveling on today.